Between the Lines, presented by Continental Diamond. I'm Tatum Everett. We've got Ben Lieber and Ben. We are celebrating a Vikings victory, 21 to 13 over the Panthers. And I want to talk first about the final drive of the game, the final defensive effort there from this team, who really turned it on in the second half. They really tested us down there in the in the red zone. What did you see from them that they were able to put up a big stop? Well, you know, all game long, the, the Panthers passing offense, we, we knew it was going to be short, short passing game, but they did ha have some chunk throws in the middle of the field between the hashes, which easier throws for a young quarterback. And that's sort of what happened that last drive. We got a little leaky. I think that we are really trying to overplay some of those outside screen, screen passes, little bubble screens they had shown all game. And so they got us down the field, but then we tightened up in the red zone. We brought a little bit more pressure. You could see that their offense was getting a little tired blocking our slew of pass, ru pass mm -hmm. rushes, which I'm sure we're going to get into. But we kind of just wore them down. And, and our coverage was great. And Harrison Smith played a, an outstanding game. I mean, one yes. of the best games I've ever seen him play. Yeah, despite the time of possession being skewed in the Panthers' favor, this defense really yeah. put up a, a great effort, as you mentioned. Five sacks on the game, none from Daniil Hunter, which was crazy. Yeah. And there were a lot of guys that shined, especially Harrison Smith. I mean, the veteran showed up big time. How much of that had to do with the way that Brian Flores started scheming up things differently in the second half? Well, I think it had a lot to do with the way he schemed things up because, you know, without, you know, going back and watching the film, it, it just seems like, you know, they knew that Bryce was not going to sit in the pocket and re really break down the defense and go, you know, one, two, three, fourth read. You know, he's not that type of quarterback just yet. So he really did a, Brian Flores did a great job of bringing some pressure off the weak side, away from the passing strength. So he knew that Bryce was not going to have an opportunity to see him and, and really you know, affect uh, anything that we were doing with that blitz. So I think the weak side, backside blitzing that, that he dialed up with Harrison down at the line of scrimmage was brilliant. Harrison Smith's first multi-sack game in his career so far. And there were several guys that were looking great on defense. And PA called Harrison Smith the player of the game. Before, you know, maybe like mid third quarter, I heard on the radio, we were like, oh, Mar Marcus Davenport yeah. is the player of the game. So do you have a new player of the game? Yeah, I mean, you got <laughs> you have to give it to Harrison Smith. But yes, you're right. At about mid third yes. quarter, we're like, dude, this Marcus Davenport, right? I mean, maybe it's not showing up in the stat book. I mean, he eventually did. But mm -hmm. I mean, he was affecting so many plays. I mean, the DJ Wanham 51 yard uh, touchdown, the little fumble recovery mm -hmm. touchdown. That was all because of, of Marcus Davenport. And then you don't see it really, you know, we, we notice it in the pass game, but he was blown up guys in the run game too. I mean, he's so stout, so strong. I saw him, you know, pick up a tight end one time and throw him across his face and he made an assisted tackle on that, on that play. He's just so big and physical. You know, I, I knew that we were gonna get some snaps out of him, mm -hmm. but I didn't realize how much he was gonna play yeah. in this game. And he, you know, credit to him with his conditioning, mm -hmm. he was a force. For, for every snap that he was out yeah, there. Yeah, he proved to be quite the difference yeah. maker. This uh, team has not allowed no offensive scores since 2020, I think PA said, which was just insane. But let's go to our offense. Yeah. Who was able to score a little bit? JJ with two touchdowns. It's his fifth double or fifth more than two touchdowns in a, in a game. And it's almost like I, I never know how to set these questions up perfectly because I almost want to just be like, what can't he I do? Know. I know. He's just always there when Kirk needs him. Well, that first one, you know, he did a good job. Um, and this is just, you know, just a savvy, you know, wide receiver move. When they when they boot out like that and he's coming from across the field, he didn't have an advantage. The defender was right on him. So rather than continue to run into coverage and, and make it really hard for Kirk, he just stopped, put his foot in the ground, and just kind of drifted away from the from the defender. And Kirk, you know, he's he's taught to do that. Look, look for those guys. You know, somebody's going to get open when you're buying time on the outside on some of those boot plays. And so he did just that. He kept his eyes down the field, saw J.J. stop, kind of reverse back away from the defender, and throws it wide open, uh, J.J. touchdown. That second touchdown, I mean, that's just where, where the, the quarterback really trusts the receiver. Mm -hmm. you, had, you had outside leverage by the cornerback with a safety over the top. Mm -hmm. They knew they were going to get some sort of double coverage. But J.J. wins, and he breaks that guy's leverage. Mm -hmm. He forces the leverage inside, and Kirk sits there, looks away from the safety, pulls the safety away for a hot second, and then just fires a dart to his outside shoulder. There's no way the defender can make a play with that velocity and that placement. It was it was beautiful. It was a master class, yeah. as they always normally put on. I feel like every week we talk about that. However, I think the thing that shined the most about the offense today was the ability to stay balanced. 135 rushing yards, yeah. 130 passing yards. 
What were the Vikings able to do in this game in particular to become more efficient in the run game? I mean, I hate to say it, but competition. <laughs> I mean, you bring in a guy like Cam Akers, yeah. and, and you know that running back room feels it. You know Alexander Madison feels that competition. So he was going to do everything that he could to showcase that why he should be still the number one back. So that's behind the scenes. And I think what happened in the game was right from the get-go, we were, we were definitive about getting downhill quickly. Yeah. We were pushing that offense or that defensive line backwards from the get-go. You know, we mixed in a few perimeter things. We had a couple little zone read type deals that a little longer developing plays, but we hit them in the mouth early and often. And then we had the nice change up with Cam getting in there. You know, it just kept them off balance. I mean, we were almost six yards of rush between the two of them. And uh, and Madison was running hard. I mean, there was no stopping him. He was not going down on first contact. He was he was chugging along. That's that's the sort of running back that mm -hmm. we have seen out of Alexander Madison for, for a couple of years now. Most definitely. Now, it was a rough start to the game. There's yeah. no denying that with the turnovers it seems to still be a problem for this team in 16 quarters 11 turnovers how do you clean that up before welcoming the reigning Super Bowl champions Chiefs this next weekend you know I I can I can live with that first pick six as much as how you know how much that daggers that first series and puts you down early but it's an aggressive mistake you know the mistakes that we've had turning the ball over those are just flat out fundamental not paying attention putting the ball on the ground guys getting the ball stripped out from their hands like that that is fixable i don't want this team to to get passive when it comes to kirk cousins throwing the ball down the field mm -hmm. stay aggressive and and so i can live personally with those type of plays you know the second one he's just trying to make a play obviously we get beat on a four-man rush uh you know good job by them by gross matos to get to the quarterback and affect the, the play you know again those things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's just they hurt worse now because we fumbled so early on in the season. Well, we didn't fumble this one away. No. It is a victory. It is in the win column. And the Vikings look to head back home to the Twin Cities and get prepared to welcome the Chiefs to U.S. Bank Stadium in just one week. This has been Between the Lines presented by Continental Diamond.